In bonus video four, I'd like to show you about three things. One, I want to pick up from the last bonus video just to remind you that when you are using the envelope, you are combining colors, not replacing colors as with the hue slider. When you use the hue slider, it takes whatever color you're using, suggesting, selecting, and changes the hue. But when you're using the local tool, the envelope, it's only adding to the existing color. And that's where the color wheel comes in handy again. You'll look and see here, for example, on this, I don't know, dark teal cookie. Well, that dark teal, teal, that's cyan. It's dark cyan. What is the opposite of cyan? Red. If I choose red and go to paint on that cookie, grab your pencil. I've been talking to you about the mask panel, the letter M. The mask panel, the letter M. But if you take the mask panel, the letter M, and you flip it, there's an alternative masking tool. The letter W is also a mask, but it's an old fashioned mask. If you're in a local tool and you hit W, it automatically activates an older version of masking in Adobe Camera Raw called Auto Mask. And Auto Mask, let's zoom up so you can get a peek. Auto Mask says, select everything inside this brush, but only if it's the same color or in the same color range as what it sees immediately under that center plus sign. You have to see it to believe it. I'm going to click on that dark teal, but I've got a huge brush and it will say, I don't care. I'm only going to select all the way until I run out of that color or unless I find that color elsewhere, like right here in the background. So there's a color mask, a quick color mask tool that you can activate with the letter W. It's a flip-flop alternative of M for the masking tool. Another shortcut. If you hold Alt or Option, it turns immediately into not a plus sign, but a minus sign. And I can turn off any extra colors that may have gotten chosen. Now that Option slash Alt key works for any selection. Just hold the Alt or the Option key on the PC to deselect any color. Now, I've got that color selected. Why did it go so, I don't know, gray? I thought I wanted it to go red. Well, we already know. When you add red, which is the real opposite to cyan, they neutralize each other. This is just more proof that red is actually opposite cyan and that the envelope tool is combining the two, not replacing the two. I'm going to cancel. Let's undo and undo and undo. So you know, if I hit the letter W, I grab my, my brush tool and notice that the auto mask feature remained selected. I see this as an issue, as a problem. You will forget and leave it on and it will misbehave. You'll think you're selecting a giant area and trying to make an edit, but why didn't it do? Oh, it's, it's awkward, it's weird when it's on. So here's what I would suggest. When you're in the brush, auto mask on or off, toggle it, use it, then turn it off. W also turns it off. I'm looking at that now. W to turn it on, W to turn it off. On, I'm gonna change my brush size, my brush edge, Let's go grab that cookie, but this time, this time, I'm gonna reset everything. 
Command Option R, Reset. Control Alt R on the PC, Reset. Let's reset. I'm masking. I'm grabbing that. Trust me, I have. And now let's go look at the Hue slider. It's loaded for me automatically that teal, that cyan hue. And I can rotate it to a new color. It's not just adding, it's replacing. It's a replacement. Just a subtle difference, once again, to reiterate between the hue slider and the envelope. I use the envelope tool more often to neutralize based on accurate knowledge of the real color wheel. Let's cancel. I'd like to show you something else you could use it for. Maybe a, a sunburn. Gosh, that's crazy. I'm going to select the color range. By the way, the last time I used my brush, that mask was turned on. I'm going to hit W and turn it off. I don't want it on. I'm going to select a color range, but I'm going to do it in a different way. The real mask tool. Shift C. Select a color range. Hmm. Now on flesh, there are actually lots of various colors that are making up her flesh, including the sunburn. So I'm going to click and drag anything, please, in that range. It did. What did it do? It's changing the color drastically. Command Option R Reset. Now I could adjust the colors to be less red. There it is. I'm adjusting the color and they look a little saturated. Sunburn does a couple of things to my flesh hue. It changes the hue to red, but it's a burn so it also darkens. It may even saturate. So I can change the saturation down. Look, sunburn gone. Now it just looks like a tan. And maybe even the exposure a bit up or down. The letter P for preview, preview, preview. Let's undo and go back in time. Here is my, my mask. Reset the image. Shift C, I'm reviewing, Shift C. Select the color range. It grabbed it. It remembers that I used my hue slider. Let's try it this time. Click with the envelope. What's the opposite of this horrid red? Probably a cyan. And notice I'm playing with the cyan saturation right there. So I could also use and watch it happen live the overlay to remove sunburn. Two more uses out of many for those tools. All right, time out, a whole new trick. If you may have issues with red eye, let me give you what you want to know. Adobe Camera Raw has a fix, but let's just solve your problem. When you take a photo with an on-camera flash, this can happen. If you'll just pop off your flash somehow and change the angle so that it's not at the same angle as your camera lens, red eye will not occur. This is a problem with the angle of the light being so close from its source to its reflection back into the camera sensor. You can avoid red eye altogether by not shooting with on-camera flash. This is why photographers often will pull that flash off to a bracket or a wire and have it off the camera. Whatever you do, just don't shoot with on-camera flash directly. I have no choice, Rick. What am I going to do? All right, fine. Let's solve it in Adobe Camera Raw. I've got a problem that someone else created for me. Let's say I'm going to solve the problem. Look over here in our tools. Sliders, cropping, spot removal. We've been to these before. Masking, the long cut for the letter M. Here it is. Red eye removal. Red eye removal. Let's tap it. I want to show you how easy it is to use the red eye removal. 
I'm going to surround. Don't even have to paint. Just surround with a big rectangle an area of infraction. Red eye. Let go. Solved. Well, that was easy. Let's do it to this eye. Hmm. Problem. Undo. Uh, maybe I missed the eye. Let's do the whole eye. Hmm. Problem. Here's the issue. We don't just have red eye. Let's undo. There's also a phenomenon with animals called pet eye. That was accidentally, in my case, red like a human. It's red eye. But pet eye is usually yellow, amber, or green. And for that, you need a new tool. Well, not a new tool, but a new setting in this tool. Red eye solves that problem. Look up. Under red eye, you'll see a pop-up for pet eye. And pet eye will solve where red eye could not. Back in space. Wow. Problem solved. That gets its own tool. Cool. You've got options. It's very easy to use with a giant rectangle. All right. New topic, final topic of this bonus video. I want to talk to you about dynamic range. And quickly, dynamic range. Let me just stop and show you dynamic range. And I'm going to connect this to your ISO. Dynamic range and ISO, which is the camera's sensitivity to light, are related. They're interrelated. A quick explanation of ISO. ISO is like a sound volume knob on your stereo system. If the sound isn't loud enough, you can amplify it by dialing up the volume on your stereo system. Now, on poorer stereo systems, if you crank the volume too much, you start to get distortion to the sound, right? But on a really amazing sound system, you can crank the volume higher without distortion. If you listen on a transistor radio, what's that? If you listen on, on a bad headset, let's say, and you crank the volume, you get distortion earlier than if you go to, a, I don't know, a, a, a major band's concert in a stadium. They have really great sound systems. They can really crank, as you may have noticed, the sound without distortion. ISO on your camera is exactly that. It's a volume amplifier, but it doesn't amplify sound. It amplifies light. If there's not enough light, you can amplify the volume of the light with the ISO knob. Likewise, distortion can occur on lower quality sound sit, on lower quality cameras. Lower quality cameras, you can't crank the volume too high without Seeing, not hearing, but seeing distortion. And that distortion shows up as electronic grain. It's called noise. Noise is the result of an over-amplified ISO volume knob. The more you amplify your volume, the less total colors you can receive in your photograph, by the way. Dynamic range. Dynamic range is how many values of light can I capture and hold? Number one, shoot in RAW, not JPEG. RAW has a, you already know this, RAW has a higher dynamic range. It captures more units of light. Increase your dynamic range by shooting in camera RAW. Two, the lower the ISO, the higher the dynamic range. When you shoot at lower ISOs, you capture more colors. When you shoot at higher ISO values, 
you get a much more reduced range of color, dynamic range. So ISO is related to how many total colors you get, not just noise, not just grain. Let's have a quick review. It's quick. ISO. ISO is the camera's sensitivity to light. I've explained that. Let's talk. In the complete darkness, there's no light. Let there be light. Now, imagine I have a scene with lots of light. 256 light sources. 256, in this case, equal light bulbs emitting equal light. How do I know there are 256? Because I generated this artwork. I know. I counted. 256, let's say, sources of light. Now, let's assume that I shoot with a lower ISO. Now, your camera's low ISO will vary. 100, 200. Some cameras will shoot at 64 or 50 or lower. But the lower the dynamic, the lower the ISO, the higher the dynamic range, and the more light I will need, actually. Let's say that I get a, a proper exposure at f8 and 1 1 25th of a second, just for theoretical purposes. It's the ISO I'm interested in. Pay attention to that ISO. If I change my ISO from 100 to 200, I double my ISO, listen, and now only half as many lights feel the same. A moment ago, I had 256 light bulbs, but now I only have half. What do I do about it? Double your ISO. It cranks the volume on only this 128 light bulbs, so they feel like 256. But what if I have half as much light again? Double your ISO. Every doubling of the ISO makes half as much light feel like full light. You get the idea. At 800 ISO, I only need, what is that, 16 light bulbs to feel like 256 did in our original example. 1600 ISO, I only need 8 light bulbs. 3200 ISO, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? At 12,800 ISO, one light bulb has its volume cranked to the point that it feels like 256 light bulbs. Now, if I could go to half a light bulb, I could double this again. You get the idea. Now, let me show you the real results. That's theoretical, but let's look. Uh, this is ISO 100. It's low, high dynamic range, therefore. On my full frame Nikon D810. This is the same camera with my ISO at 12,800. It looks about the same as far as light goes, but trust me, this was the equivalent of that one light bulb compared to 256 light bulbs. You can barely see a difference. That's crazy. Oh, and at 25,600 ISO, it is the equivalent of half a light bulb. Cranked the volume up as much as 256 light bulbs. That is my Nikon D800. Now, this is my crop sensor Nikon D300. Now, already you may see an issue from the previous, and the issue is with the color. The color has shifted somewhat because my D300 does not have nearly the dynamic range that my D810 does. But at ISO 800, I don't see the grain. At 800, I'm getting away with murder. Oh, but at 6400, uh, I got caught. In fact, notice, not just grain, but check out my color. 
Going from 800 ISO on a Nikon D300, a mid-frame camera, a crop sensor camera, at some point soon, my color goes berserk. You lose your color. Color is related, it's interrelated with your ISO. The lower the ISOs, the more dynamic range. That's the key point. Here's my tip. Shoot at whatever ISO does the trick. Most of us will shoot at too low an ISO and try to solve the problem by changing the exposure in post-processing. For example, in Adobe Camera Raw. This is my D810 at 100 ISO, and I brightened the total image in post, and I don't see grain. I'm good to go. There was enough dynamic range in here that even at the low ISO, when I brightened the image's exposure, I still don't see grain. There's that much color in the image. I won't get caught. But earlier I showed you the same image at 1200 or 12,800 ISO and it looked just about as good. I did not see grain. You can rewind the video and verify that that's the truth. But when I shot at 12,800 and then I opened it up in post-processing, I brightened it. I am getting caught. I'm seeing the grain. I'm seeing the grain. Hmm. Takeaway, shoot at the ISO you need to receive the right exposure so that you don't have to open it up in post. Higher ISOs, you will not get away with it in post. Yeah, 25,600, I really got caught when I opened that up. All right, these are the areas I feel on those two cameras I can get away with not getting caught. I can go up to 12,800 on my D810 and not get caught. It's sellable. It's marketable. I can only go up to about 800 ISO on my Nikon D300 crop sensor camera without getting caught with grain. But where do I get caught? Color. Color. Wow. Color. It doesn't have nearly the dynamic range. And when I push it, it gets worse. When I open it in post-processing, it gets even worse. Test your camera. Your mileage will vary. Now, let me show you how I use it in the field. I'm going to show you an image. I did not create it for this demo, but it turns out to be a great one for this demo. I shot this image at what I thought was going to be plenty of brightness. It turns out it wasn't. But because I captured this image at a low ISO, 100 ISO, on a full frame camera. There is so much dynamic range in this image that I can pump it in post-processing and not get caught. Okay, that just blows my mind. That blows my mind that I can shoot at low ISOs that don't even seem to capture enough exposure, but I have the free will to open them up in post-processing and still achieve greatness. No grain, so much color. All right? Let me sneak out of bounds and show you a great website. Go to this site and check your camera. I'm at dxomark.com, dxomark.com. And when you go to dxomark.com, you can go look for rankings of particular things. I'm gonna look at rankings of camera sensors in order to see before I buy my next camera what has great dynamic range. Camera sensors, I'm clicking now. Camera sensor ratings. I can separate by brand if I choose, by price. Oh yeah, 45,200, I think not. Let's scroll down, however, and just look at the total chart without me having to put in criteria. What you're looking at 
are DXO Mark's independent reviews of every DSLR camera currently in production. Now, not surprisingly, perhaps, for $8,995, you could purchase for yourself the top, the winner, the Hasselblad, wow, X1D50C, it gets the top score. Come beyond, and you're going to see two values. They called them portrait and landscape. I don't think those are great names, but the first value is how many bits, how many colors can any individual pixel be? You've heard of 8-bit, you've heard of 14-bit. This camera captures 26.2-bit. Let's just say that's a lot of color. Dynamic range can be measured in units of light or stops. Now, the human eye at one glance can see between 10 and 11 or so stops of light at the same time. Bright, bright units of light and dark, dark units of light, shadow detail, even in the darkest light. That's what a human eye can capture. I'm aiming for around 10 or 11 units stops to match the capability of the human eye. This camera captures 14.8, far exceeding what the human eye can see. That's great news, great news. But check out the number one ranking DSLR camera under $8,995 the Nikon D850 and then followed by all the rest as you go down the line. Sneak down that line and see how far down on that line your current camera may fall. Now I'm going to tap one we could afford perhaps if I only sold my car. I'm going to click on the Nikon D850 as an example as an example and just show you, I'm looking at those same sort of scores. It got a score of 102, whatever that means. The portrait or the color depth, the bit depth is 26.4. And the dynamic range measured in units or stops of light is 14.8. Now, if I go look at something called measurements, the ISO sensitivity the dynamic range. Notice, and here's what I want you to see, that as my ISO increases 50, 100, 200, 400, and so on, while I can increase my ISO and may or may not see grain, my total number of colors, the dynamic range plummets. Dynamic range is completely interrelated to your ISO. For your information, this is a week on color. And a week on color would not be complete without mentioning the phrase dynamic range. It really means how large a box of crayons am I working with? And when you want the biggest possible box of crayons, shoot at lower ISOs. You know to do that, to eliminate grain, but I'm letting you know it also increases the number of colors that you begin with. All right? Welcome. You made it through week three. Let's get ready to go hit week four, some very advanced techniques. Everything we are learning with a sprinkle of new tricks in week four all together in real time so we can see the workflow of a professional photo editor. I'm proud of you. You've shown great patience and fortitude. Don't give up one more week.